Some of the nation's most popular dog breeds are in the sporting group. They are alert, intelligent, and incredibly cute. This show is all about outdoor dogs and the amazing things they are able to do. <laughs> Here. One of the most popular breeds in the United States is the Labrador Retriever. So he's excited right now, jumping at the bit just to go. Yep, and you can see he's focused on that gun, and I'll just tell him to mark, which is his cue that something's about to happen there, right here. Mark. Watch it. Jagger. How beautiful. And you can see how hard he's trying to swim because he wants to get there fast. That is beautiful to watch. The retrieve is his reward. As soon as he gets that, that's his instant reward. He doesn't need a treat back here at the line or anything like that. Even yelling good dog right now would be a little pointless. He got his reward right there. Mike Lardy is one of the top retriever trainers in the United States. In the tiny town of Boston, Georgia, we watch over and over as dogs race to get the prize. Back. Hunters love them because of that strong instinct to retrieve, be it a quail, duck, or just a piece of rubber. Yet they are so gentle, it is said they can carry an egg in their mouths without breaking the shell. Labs are great family dogs, too. Since 1992, retrievers have been listed as the most popular breed in the United States. Heel. Heel. But a retriever trained by Mike Lardy, Jagger, is a competition dog. We treat them really like full-fledged, high-class athletes. We have a conditioning program where they go on long, slow runs. We have sprint conditioning program where they'll do sprints in the water. We swim them behind the kayak for half an hour. So this is like a canine football player. This, these are, this canine Olympics. This is the cream of the cream, these dogs that make it to this level. And even at this level, there's some dogs that are really good that you know, win two or three trials a year, and there are some that maybe will just win one trial in its whole career. It's very difficult. Mike shows us how intelligent retrievers are with a training exercise that tests their memory. Yeah, that's good. Come here. Okay, uh, Michael, you can come out. We're gonna have a triple, so, you, so I want you to know what's gonna happen. Good. Okay, that gun is gonna throw that way, middle gun is gonna throw to the left, and that gun is gonna throw to the right. So I'm gonna send the dog for that one when she delivers it. She's gotta remember where the other two are and go get them one at a time. We watch as the retriever in training goes straight to the first bumper. Jewel. Based on nothing more than a hand signal from Mike. So the way I like to put it is I'm helping them remember. But I, you know, if I wanna go get that bird over there, I'm not gonna have her back pointed over here. I'm gonna come in, receive, and focus right to where the next one is. So your body language is very important. Very yes. important. And you'll see her spin around and look right out there. Good, sit. Jewel. So now this is not as easy as the last one because the last one had just been shot and the gunner was out there. She's got to remember how far out it was. And there was only one. And she's got to remember three. So let's see what she does there. So she knows no, she's in there. She's looking. Boom. That's a nice mark. That's a really nice mark. She remembers where the second shot came from and retrieves that bumper. Amazingly, after that, she heads to the place she heard the first gunshot come from. It is pure joy to watch these dogs train. You know, they're affectionate, and most of these dogs, people think, have the misconception that maybe field trial dogs are raised in a very sterile environment, and they're retrieving machines, and they're not, you know, they don't live the life of a regular dog. Actually, all these dogs are owned by people who bring them in the house, so they are a pet, they are like people's kids, but they're also 
you know, premier athletes. Because of their keen sense of smell and refusal to give up, military and police forces often use them as detection dogs to track down smugglers, terrorists, or thieves. They will hold anything in their mouths, including hands and arms. Labs are smart, but this dog is often cited as the most intelligent of all domestic breeds. Lie down, Jen. The Border Collie is another outdoor dog, categorized as a Lie working or down. herding breed. Lie down. Just as labs live to retrieve, Border Collies just want to round things up. We spend a lot of hours guiding from the puppy stage to this stage. Neil is about a, he's an almost four-year-old Border Collie. He's, um, so we'll, we'll send him around. Uh, so if I want to bring the sheep back to me, shh. I'll just send him and he'll go get around the, the, the sheep and start fetching him back this direction. That's amazing. All you had to do is that little noise. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to send him around to the clockwise side. <whistles> Lie down. So if I want him to go counterclockwise, his word is way. I can lie him down. That's his lie down whistle. He has a walk straight in command. Lie down, lie down, or walk up, lie down. So every word has a corresponding whistle. So if I want him to come count, uh, clockwise, his, his word is come by, come by, lie down, lie down, lie down. And then he has a whistle for that as well. Lie down. So again, so if I want to say push him out to that far corner. Spending a day with Brian Cash is like going back in time. Brian is a shepherd. He has more than 400 head of sheep, and he says this border collie is better than any piece of farm equipment he owns. To me, he's, he's my perfect picture. He's a smart dog. He's a very athletic dog. He really wants to do his job. He loves what he does. I mean, this is all he lives for. He, he can be a good pet, and then he loves attention, and he loves to be loved on. But really, at the end of the day, all he really wants to do is get out and work his sheep. And so it seems to, when you give a command, it's not just what you say. It's the intensity with which you say it. Absolutely. So I can vary. So again, they come with five commands, and you can vary all those commands a good bit. So if I want a fast, hard action, I'll give that, that word or the whistle with a really fast, hard emphasis. If I want long and slow and very calm, I'll stretch my words out or stretch my whistle out so it's long and slow. So like right now, I want him to go out and gather those sheep up. Neil, that'll do. Neil, here. Look. Stay. <laughs> Come by. So that's that'll send him, right, so that'll send him clockwise just around the sheep. Just that calm little. Mm -hmm. So you see he's now gotten behind the sheep, and mm -hmm. he's just going to start fetching him back to us. I'm going to send him around over to the okay. counterclockwise side a little bit. And he knows the sheep want to go that way, so he's traveling a little bit on this side, trying to keep him over here. Way, 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 way. Lie down. Lie down. And then we'll send him around the other way. Sheep are so funny. But the sheep are always. With better. a bit of coaching, I am actually able to move the sheep around with the help of Jen. Here, try this one. Step over here and tell her to come by. Okay. Lie down. Lie down. Now do it. Come by. There you go. So let her go on around your sheep, and then when she gets behind him, tell her to W-A-L-K-U-P. Jen, walk up. There you go. Good. So here walk out again towards me and let her just keep bringing those sheep to you. That's the reward of taking the command. And if you want her to go uh, counterclockwise, give her a W-A-Y. Way. All okay. the way around. Way. Way. There you go. Lie down. Lie down. Perfect. We walk to the pond where the dogs take a plunge, and we see yet another example of that incredible herding instinct. Brian told Neil to bring the rest of the flock over, but the flock had moved. No matter, he brought us what he found. But I'll be busy trying to keep, oh, oh, we got cows instead. <laughs> Meow. 
Way, way. Stay, come by, come by, come by, come by. Stay, stay. Way, way, way. It takes a lot of guts for a 35 pound animal to take on a 600 or 800 pound cow. Come by, <laughs> come by. He said you said bring something. Well, uh, right. you did. He brought us cows. Stay, lie down. Lie down. <laughs> That's hilarious. Is that funny? He said, well, you said find something, so I did. And here you see the fierce, intimidating stare these collies are known for. All right, y'all want to run down the road? We'll go see some puppies. Puppies are wonderful. <laughs> Every time I say puppies, I think of um, 101 Dalmatians. Oh, it's right, puppies. puppies. <laughs> <laughs> And now we have the definition of cute. They look like little pandas, but the mom, Blair, could care less. I'm sorry, you were saying, Whoa. lie down. <laughs> There's a, um, lie down. I know, you're a bored mama. <laughs> she is. I've got the puppies and you don't care. <laughs> no, and she does, like I said, bare minimum. She goes in, feeds her puppies, and she's done. <laughs> she's not a she's not a dog that's gonna yeah, spend Yeah, she wanted some loving from me, but as soon as they came over and, and started like, no, trying to feed, it's like I'm out of here. Yeah, she really would like to go on with her life. Just another couple weeks, and then she'll be good to go. If you see sheep or goats around town, they are probably part of Brian's flock. They are used to clear land and provide a chemical-free alternative to keep invasive plants out of parks. It all centers around this dog, still used around the world because of that instinct to leave no animal behind. Every day is magic. I mean, you know, I, amazing things happen with dogs and sheep. Uh, not that long ago, I sent a dog, lie down, lie down, to go and gather up sheep, and nothing happened. And it's very unusual. Normally, the dog will go down, and start get behind the sheep, and start bringing sheep back. So I was really worried, you know, something's happened. And I go down and I, I, I'm calling for my dog and I, I'm not seeing him and it was Neil. And I, I finally get him to come back. And he runs, say, halfway the distance from where I see him coming from, looks at me and he turns around and goes back. And he says, no, I'm not leaving this area. So I go down there and I've got a, a you having a little tiny lamb. You know, and, and it was kind of out of season, so it was a surprise for us. We generally only have lambs he in December, January. Leave that. Nope, he said no. You know, I can't bring. You know, the, the goal of a border collie is to fetch the entire flock back, and and so he's he's got a member of his flock back there, and you know they take I giving think, birth. Totally. That is the essence of a border collie. I'll get your sheep moving, but I'm not leaving any of my flock behind. The collie is faithful to its flock, but German shepherds are dedicated to their owner. It is one reason so many police officers work with this breed. The canine division for Georgia's Department of Natural Resources trains in Forsyth. Watch this dog find a gun that has been carefully hidden and covered. Good boy, Crete. Hey, come here. Good boy. Good boy. Other dogs have a good nose, but Major Stephen Adams says the shepherd is a better fit for police work. A German shepherd, as compared to, say, a beagle or a lab, uh, if you're doing just air scenting or tracking or article search, they may be equal. But where the German shepherd uh, has an edge is it's able to do things like agility jump through windows, uh, you can deploy it from an aircraft, you know, it, it can ride in an aircraft. Um, they also will do apprehension, they can do tracking, and uh, th they're just better suited as a more well-rounded dog. The Beagle and the German Shepherd would probably locate the person, but the German Shepherd could help you apprehend the person. DNR's law enforcement unit imports these dogs from Europe, where they are bred for this kind of work. They have one of the hardest bites of any dog, and they fall right behind the border collie and poodles in the area of intelligence. Good boy, good boy, good boy, good boy, Ooh, good boy. 
they are extremely loyal to their handler. They get uh, canine training on the job. They have to go through a handler school. And believe it or not, normally the canines are easier to train than the handler. Uh, when you're on a track or something, the canine wants to turn right. The canine knows where to go. Uh, the job is to get the handler to believe the canine. And once those two sync up and the handler trusts the canine, the canine trusts the handler, uh, then they're, they're ready to deploy. A canine and a handler can do the work of three or four officers. We decide to put a handler and his dog to a test. First, a DNR employee plays the role of poacher. Poaching is a major problem in Georgia on public and private lands. As game wardens say, poachers are thieves. They are stealing wildlife. The scene is set. We meet Corporal Jeremy Bolin at Standing Boy Wildlife Management Area near Columbus. When we hear a shot and a hunter comes out and says, you know, look, I wasn't hunting, but we suspect we may not be getting the full truth, uh, then we can utilize our dogs and we're going to deploy them in the woods and just do an article search, okay? In this situation, we'll be looking for evidence. You know, it could be shell casings where maybe they shot or the actual weapon. All right, well, let's see what this boy can do. What's his name? It's Ruger. Ruger, I would not want to mess with you. <laughs> you ready to find it? You ready to go find it? You ready to go find it? Go find it. Ruger picks up a scent where the pretend poacher walked through the tall grass. And then something we did not expect. What you got? What'd you find? Oh, that's a good boy. Good boy. Oh, we located one of the shotgun shells. But Ruger isn't finished. Jeremy is a good sport, but it will be embarrassing if his dog cannot find the gun. Yet Jeremy never doubts that this moment will occur. Ruger, good boy! Oh, that's a good boy! Good boy! Good boy, what'd you find? Come here, good boy! Good boy! All right, so we uh, were able to locate some evidence, 12-gauge uh, shotgun shells. And then we were able to cut the track where the hunter went into the woods. Uh, and as you can see, he laid it down beside that pine tree right there. Uh, hit it by placing some pine straw on top of it. And uh, we were able to locate the evidence that we needed to prosecute this case. Good boy! Ruger's reward is a rubber ball and a huge amount of praise but he is also used to help local police. And there was one time Jeremy was just a little worried. We've tracked, um, you know, fleeing felons. Um, remember one particular case, we had a big dog fighting operation on uh, a surrounding county. Uh, several people took off running from that, from that uh, situation. Uh, we were tracking in the middle of the night, like around midnight, uh, and Ruger took us to about four or five guys that had fled that uh, illegal activity scenario and uh, to where they were laying on the ground trying to hide from law enforcement. We were able to take them into custody. Because of him? Yes. They, they weren't too scary. They That's were, right. They were afraid once, they, of him. once they heard the dog coming, they decided, you know, it was time to uh, not move and go ahead and give up. Corporal Brooks Varnell works with the handlers and their dogs and says they are often called out on search and rescue missions, as well as tracking down criminals. Hypothetical question, you may not have an answer, but um, have you noticed that, that people fleeing from officers are more scared of the gun or the dog? Dog. Really? 100% of the time. They don't want that bite? Almost everyone is scared of the dogs. Yep. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's quite humorous, you know, you show up and you have this gun on your side and everything and people, you know, I guess it's human nature. They, and they know what type of people that we are, that we're not going to just harm them for no reason. But uh, then they see that dog and it brings a whole new level. All bets are off. That's right. <laughs> uh, and he's a great partner to have out here when we're dealing with all these people. 
DNR dogs are also trained to find wildlife. They are used to locate bears, poached songbirds, smuggled sea turtle eggs, anything they are told to find. So we have another test. We have the dove. All right, I'm gonna hide this. Jeremy and Ruger cannot possibly know where I am going to put the dove. You ready to find it? You wanna find some dove, huh? You ready to find it? Find it. Find it. Good boy, find it. It takes him a while. I could have placed that dove in four directions, but Ruger is now picking up my scent. What you got? What you got? Oh, that's a good boy! Out! Oh, that's a good boy! Good boy! Now we just give a reward, like a tug. It's just playing tug of war. Uh, the dog wins. You just always let the dog win. Ah, good boy! These dogs are considered to be true police officers. They even wear a badge. Come here, show off your badge. Look at that. Yes, yes, you're a good boy. Don't bite me in the face. <laughs> good boy. That's pretty cool. Fearless, intelligent, dedicated, and loyal. German Shepherds have been listed as the second most popular breed in the United States, and many police officers would say they are the ultimate outdoor working dog. But a lot of hunters love this dog. Formerly known as the English Pointer, in the South, they are simply referred to as bird dogs. They will hunt for quail until someone makes them stop. Breeder Bruce Mercer sells his pups all over the United States as well as internationally. They're an extremely loving dog. If you want to go out and spend the afternoon hunting, you can spend all afternoon. They've got enough endurance. They're athletic. They can easily handle anything that you put them in front of as far as complexity. But most of all, they love people. The pointer is used to find upland game, like bobwhite quail. The dog finds birds in the wild and stops immediately without scaring them. It then goes on point to show the hunters the exact location. The dogs you see here are well seasoned and used in professional hunts in the Thomasville area. Getting a dog to freeze on point without going after the birds takes a lot of training. And at that point, what we're going to do is flush the bird, let it fly off and let her get excited, let her enjoy what we're doing. And then that's, that's the beginning steps of her standing still. As you'll see some of these other dogs that we start developing, um, when we flush birds for them, they've already been through that training. Therefore, they'll stand still and watch it fly off and kind of just admire it. So that's the ultimate goal is we want a dog that, that stands still on point. We go out and flush as a hunter. When the birds fly away, we shoot a blank. And at that time, the dog just stands and watches the bird fly away and that's the training. This is an actual competition at the J.L. Lester Wildlife Management Area. Just watch how fast the dogs move. It is impossible to catch up, which is why everyone, including the judges, is on horseback. There are others on foot calling out to the dogs. You always want these dogs to stay in front of the horse in a, in a what we call a 10 to 2 cone. You want them out front all the time so everything is forward. So right now they're just singing to them, just saying relax, go find the bird. They're just a light communication so that the dog and the handler knows where each other is. The pointer is the emblem for the Westminster Kennel Club.
The show was first held in 1877 and originated as a show for gun dogs, primarily pointers and setters. Pointers were bred to be hunting dogs, and a good one can cost thousands of dollars for a pup. Like all the outdoor dogs on this show, they are like watching poetry in motion. All wonderful breeds, but I think a lot of you have a dog like my dog. She obeys if she's in the right mood. She knows a few tricks, sometimes, but she does sit by the window and wait until I get home every day, and she stays by my side from that point on. And in my book, that is a champion dog. I'm Sharon Collins. We'll see you next time.